Hey guys, it's Carly here for MFT. Today I wanted to share with you a technique I've been using a lot lately, masking with glossy accents. I've stamped a few images from the Delightful Halloween set and I made sure to use a waterproof black ink because glossy accents is a water-based medium and I don't want any of my stamp lines to smear. While I'm not going to color my ghost in, I did want to give him some rosy cheeks. I used a colored pencil, a Copic marker, or any other alcohol marker would work great, but I wouldn't want to use a water-based medium, because like I said, the glossy accents is water-based and we don't want anything to smear. Now I'm filling in my images with my glossy accents. I'm bringing it all the way to the edge, and if I get any outside the lines, I have a little craft pick handy that I can use to kind of scrape it off. The craft pick is also great if your nozzle isn't fine enough and you have a little area you need to get it into, you can kind of pull some over with your craft pick. So you can see I got a little bit outside of the line. So I wanna go right up to the line and even cover the line, but I don't want it to go outside the line. So I'm just using my craft pick while the glossy accents is still wet to kind of scrape it off like an eraser. Okay, so I've got my images all filled in with glossy accents. I'm gonna set it aside to dry. I'm actually gonna let mine dry overnight and I'm going to fill in another one on a piece of watercolor cardstock just to show you two different types later. So here they are after they've dried all night. They're nice and smooth and shiny, and they're ready to ink blend. So I'm going to grab the first one that's on just white cardstock, and I'm going to ink blend Distress Oxide inks over the glossy accented images. I'm using a paper towel to hold the bottom so I don't get fingerprints on it, but you can see right away that that glossy accents is resisting the ink, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. It looks so great. I love how this comes out. Okay, so Distress Oxide inks are my favorite for ink blending because I think they're so easy to blend on any type of cardstock. But for this technique, it is something to note that if your glossy accents doesn't go all the way covering the line of your stamped image, it is going to get a little bit um, chalky or milky kind of looking when you put the oxides over it. So that is going to impact the color of your black line a little bit. So after blending, I'm going to use a dry paper towel to wipe off any excess ink from the glossy accented images, and then I'm going to let the ink blending dry before I add a stamp sentiment. Now let's grab that one that I did with the watercolor cardstock. Now when I'm ink blending with regular distress inks or any other dye inks, watercolor cardstock, a smooth one, is my favorite to use for ink blending. I just find it easier. Now, something else that's great about using dye inks for this technique instead of the oxides is you're not gonna get that chalky finish. So even if your glossy accents masking doesn't go all the way to the edge of your line, if some of your line is unmasked, the dye inks that go over it are not going to leave a chalky finish. So it's gonna look a little bit sharper than the oxide version. And just for comparison, here is the two side by side. So on the left, that's the oxide, and on the right, that's the regular Distress Ink. And I use the same colors for both, Picked Raspberry and Carved Pumpkin, and they're just a little bit different. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of water splatter. I like to spray the water on my hand and kind of sprinkle it over my panels and then grab a paper towel and blot up the water. And one more thing about water, since the panel on the left is just regular cardstock, not watercolor cardstock, I don't wanna to put too much water and I don't wanna move it around too much because I don't want it to damage my cardstock. Now, after adding all this color, the little pink cheeks that I penciled before we masked it with glossy accents don't look so pink. So a fun thing is you can take an alcohol marker and color on top of the glossy accents so I can make those cheeks a little bit pinker in my finished card. And here's the finished oxide version of the card with a little bit of black splatter and a stamp sentiment. So the technique's really fun for images that you wanna leave white, like the little ghost, but it's also fun if you wanna color. So I've stamped a sweet little bee from the Beeline to Your Heart set and I'm gonna color it in with some Copic markers. I'm keeping my coloring pretty simple, but I'm adding all my little details before I mask it with the glossy accents. So once my B is yellow and black, then I'm giving him some pink cheeks. I'm going to give him a few little white highlights and I'm going to leave his little antenna and his wings plain so that they're masked and they stay white. After giving my white highlights a chance to dry, I'm going to cover him with glossy accents too. I'm gonna to be careful not to drag the tip of my glossy accents bottle over those white highlights. I don't wanna mess them up. And I probably should have used my craft pick a little bit more on this because my mask is a little bit messy, but after letting him dry overnight, I'm going to ink blend over the top. I'm using oxides again because they're just my favorite and I'm okay with that little bit of chalky halo around the stamp image. 
Now for this panel after blending, I repeated the same process, adding a little bit of water splatter, letting it dry, adding a sentiment and a little bit of black splatter, and here is the finished card. So you can tell I'm having fun with these cards, right? So after I finished this one, I kept going with the stuck together set. I stamped three of the cactuses across the bottom of my card panel. I colored them with Copic markers, leaving a few things white. I did forget to add my white highlights in before I masked them off with glossy accents and let them dry overnight, but that's okay, I still think they're cute. Once it was dry, I did some Distress Oxide blending with a trio of pinks to give it kind of an ombre background effect, and I love how it turned out. Okay, one last one to show you. So this card is the same as my first one. I used the same stamps and the same layout. I just used different colors of ink. I used shaded lilac and salvage patina, and then over the top I used black soot. I hardly ever use black to ink blend, but I love how it turned out. So thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you are feeling inspired to craft. Hope to see you again here soon. Happy crafting!